Hey everybody, it's low carbon keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com bringing you keto without the crazy. So one thing to remind you about, which is the Keto Made Simple Masterclass. If you want help with keto, if you are totally overwhelmed and confused and put off by the millions of different messages and conflicting information and just overwhelming, confusing stuff out there about what is actually a really simple, straightforward, effective, fun, yummy, delicious way to eat and get healthy, do check out the Keto Made Simple Masterclass. There is a link below. Okay, on to the topic at hand. Every now and then I get a client who says, she doesn't like red meat or she doesn't have a taste for meat. She doesn't care for meat. That's usually the way that I don't really care for meat. And let me define the terms up front here. When I personally say meat, I mean animal flesh of any kind, animal muscle flesh. So I mean beef, pork, poultry, lamb, bison, whatever else, rabbit, alligator, whatever else there might be. Um, I, I guess I would say seafood is a, maybe a different category, but even if I think meat, I'm also thinking fish, like fin fish. So when I say meat, that's what I mean. When other people say meat, like when I get a client that says I don't really care for meat, I've come to realize they generally mean red meat. You, sometimes also pork, but they're usually refer they're not usually including in that poultry and fish and shellfish so poultry meaning could be chicken could be turkey duck you know fowl that stuff when they say meat it's usually red meat and sometimes pork now cultural and religious prohibitions aside let's talk about why you might not care for meat so if you are somebody who uh, follows a kosher diet or follows the laws of halal or you have some other religious or cultural thing that prohibits you from eating certain foods do what you need to do to respect your religious beliefs and whatever you're doing i'm talking about people with no such restriction who just you they just don't like the idea of eating a certain thing and i'm referring mostly to women here i know there are plenty of you know male vegetarians out there or males who maybe just don't like red meat whatever no big deal but in my experience so far almost everyone who has said this to me that they don't care for meat or they don't have a taste for meat it's women and so I wanted to do this video because my question is, mm, what do you mean when you say you don't like meat or you don't, you don't care for meat? Do you get physically sick when you eat it? Like is, do you seem to have some type of intolerance or sensitivity? Do you get physically uncomfortable? Could it be a digestive thing or, or could it be that we as Americans, but especially as women, have been culturally conditioned to think that red meat is bad for us and that there's you know something harmful about red meat that we should either avoid it entirely or only eat it very sparingly. I have a feeling for most people, it is the latter. It's not a physical reaction where they get uncomfortable or sick. It's more of a cultural programming and it's an entirely psychological thing. Oh, I just don't care for meat. And I think this happens for a lot of reasons. I'll, I'll put links, you know, as always, check out the links. Um, I did two videos not that long ago on protein. And one of them was specifically geared toward women on ketogenic diets, encouraging you to eat more protein. Now, protein of any kind, but certainly that would include red meat. Um, and then I did another video that was just talking about a high protein diet. And what does that even mean? How do we define high protein? And is it a problem? Is it not? So in those videos, I 
very quickly debunked the myths, the fear mongering that high protein intakes, particularly from animal food and particularly from red meat, that, that these are in any way harmful for your kidney function or your bones. They are not. And I did two very, very detailed blog posts. If you think my videos are long, try reading my blog sometime. Um, when, so when I said I debunked in the video, I basically just said it very quickly. I have two super, super long blog posts in which I link to a ton of the scientific literature so you can see for yourself, Amy Berger is not making it up that animal protein and red meat are not bad for your bones. They're not leaching calcium out of your bones to buffer the acidity from the protein. That's nonsense. Um, and it's not bad for kidney function. Even if you have chronic kidney disease, most of the studies on protein restriction in that scenario have shown that there is not really any benefit. Now, obviously, always work with your doctor. This is not medical advice. If you have end stage renal failure, that is probably a reason to limit protein. Other than that, just read the blog post. But again, this isn't medical advice and I'm getting too far afield. Let's get back to the meat issue. So if you can get over those fears, okay, okay, red meat is actually not bad for my kidneys. It's not bad for my bones. And it's not gonna kick me out of ketosis. It's not gonna spike my insulin. It's not gonna spike my blood sugar. That's also mythical nonsense that I'll link to some debunking below. If you can forget all of that, even then, it's hard to convince a woman, especially a young woman, to sit down in front of a big honking juicy piece of steak. And I don't know why, because I love to do that. But for other, I've been at this a long time. I've been eating this way a long time. I think there's a lot of women who have just been culturally programmed to think it's unladylike or it's unfeminine. And my only response to that is who the who cares who ca how dare how dare anyone tell me what's feminine and what's ladylike when i'm at the dinner table i mean we we have kind of an epidemic of of straight up diagnosable iron deficiency anemia and i think there's also a lot of women young women of reproductive age walking around with kind of subacute, subclinical iron deficiency, kind of just low-ish iron levels. Um, you know, not, not only are we losing a little bit of blood every month if you are menstruating regularly, most of you aren't replacing a lot of that iron because you're not eating iron-rich foods. So how, how could it possibly be unladylike to eat a food that is rich in iron? and rich in B12 that we need for energy and moods, and it's rich in all the B vitamins, and it's rich in selenium, which we need for thyroid hormone conversion. Like all of this stuff, red meat is great. Um, carnitine, there's, there's so many nutrients that are really very highly concentrated in red meat. And to be clear, you can get just about all of these nutrients from other foods. So if you don't eat red meat, you can still get carnitine, you can still get B12, you can still get choline, you can still get you know all these other things from other foods. Red meat isn't the only source, but it happens to be the richest in some of these nutrients. And there's just, we've got to get over this weird cultural programming that it's unfeminine or unladylike and that you are somehow serving yourself, serving your physical and mental health by eating your little salad with your little three ounces of grilled chicken and there's like not a molecule of iron in sight, you know? Um, <laughs> so I really, I, if you are someone who thinks you don't like red meat, if, if you just don't like the flavor or the texture, fine. Like I, I'm not trying to convince anyone 
to eat something they don't like. There's, there's foods that I don't like that are very nutritious that I don't care how nutritious they are. If I don't like it, I'm not going to force myself to eat it if I can get those exact same nutrients somewhere else. So, you know, you don't, you, you don't have to eat red meat. But if you have had an aversion to it, if you've been avoiding it for a long time, especially on a low carb diet, think about why. Do you actually get sick when you eat it? Or do you just plain not like it? Or do you have a lot of emotional and psychological baggage around it that if you were to start letting go of that baggage, you could eat a nice fatty ribeye or a nice, I, everybody loves ribeye, but I, I prefer a New York strip steak because it just, um, don't, don't knock me out of the club here. Sometimes ribeye is actually a little too fatty for me. And the New York strip is typically a little bit leaner, right? So anyway, the point is it's still a nice, juicy, yummy steak either way. So, um, what else can I say? I'm not, I'm not even going to touch the environmental argument because that's a whole separate thing. Um, I'm a nutritionist, so I'm going to stick to that. I'm going to stick to the nutrition argument, but I will link to a video on YouTube that knocked it out of the park with regard to debunking the whole, you know, cows are bad for the planet and cows are causing climate change and blah, because that's nonsense too. So if you think you are doing the planet a favor by avoiding red meat, that's also a piece of baggage that you are welcome to drop and never pick up ever again. Um, okay, what else can I say? Probably nothing. Maybe it's time for me to make a video that's shorter than 15 minutes for once in my life. Yeah. If you don't like red meat, don't eat red meat, but don't avoid it because of weird, fear-mongering, psychological baggage, garbage nonsense. And um, if somebody is going to judge you for eating a big, fatty, rare, bloody, juicy steak or a well-done steak, if that's how you like it, then that's their problem. And that's probably not somebody you want to have in your life anyway. If some man, I mean, I, I'm heterosexual, so, you know, cisgendered, like if there is, if I'm out with a man and he's going to think less of me because I'm eating this thing, well, then I don't want to date him anyway. Or if you, whatever your gender, whatever your, you know, partner preference, whatever that person is, you don't want, you don't want that person to be your romantic partner anyway, if they're going to think less of you for eating a piece of red meat, screw them. And I'm going to end on that fun note. I will see you next time. Check out all the links below to the debunking of the bones and the kidney thing and the environment thing and the high protein keto women and all the rest of the good stuff. See you next time.